Are you tired of having this guilty conscience and sin mentality where you're just constantly repenting to God and saying, God, forgive me, forgive me, and it's just nothing but problems and problems? Did you know that Jesus does not want this for you, and he does not want you to live this way, and that is not what he wants? And, and, without further ado, intro. What's up, Kingdom Influencers? Look, if you are new here and you have never been here before, consider subscribing. And I hope you enjoy this video because this is gonna give you some serious freedom from condemnation and guilt and shame. Let's get into it. Look, I'm gonna get into Hebrews 10, and I know this is gonna take a little bit, but the setup is so worth your freedom, and I promise you, it will not take long. So Hebrews 10, here we go. For it is impossible by the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ entered the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you have not desired, Father, but instead you have prepared a body for me to offer, which was Jesus saying, you've prepared me as a body to lay down for my people. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have not taken delight in. Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, to fulfill what is written of me in the scroll of the book. You have neither desired nor have you taken delight in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, which are offered according to the law. And by the way, guys, how many times do we constantly repent, 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 feel like we have to sacrifice for sin? It's just not needed. Guys, your sins are forgiven. All we have to do now is just receive his forgiveness. Let's get back into this. And so, he does away with the first covenant as means of atoning for sin based on animal sacrifices so that he may inaugurate a second covenant by means of obedience. And in accordance with this will of God, we who believe in the message of salvation have been sanctified, that is set apart as holy through the offering of the body of Jesus, the Messiah and anointed one once for all. We have been made holy because of his sacrifice, guys. What? This is so big, let's not miss it. So many people just read over it and they're just like, oh yeah, Jesus died for my sins, but not ever living in the freedom that the sacrifice actually paid for you to have. So he said, whom the son is set free is free indeed. So let's get into this freedom. Let's see what it is. Every priest stands at his altar of service, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over and over, which are never able to strip away the sins that envelop and cover us. Whereas Christ, having offering the one sacrifice, the all-sufficient sacrifice of himself for sins for all time, sat down, signifying the completion of atonement for sin. He sat down at the right hand of God, the position of honor, waiting from that time onward until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by the one offering he has perfected forever and completely cleansed those who are being sanctified. I want you to pay special attention to this. This annihilates condemnation, any guilt, any sin consciousness where you're constantly repenting because you're constantly being like, oh, I feel like my sins, God's judging me. I feel like God's judging me. I feel like my sins are separating me from God. No, it's not. And this is a scripture. For by the one offering, guys, the one offering, he has perfected forever and completely cleansed those who are being sanctified bring each believer to a spiritual completion and maturity and the holy spirit also adds his testimony to us just in case we didn't get it the first time this is the covenant that i will make with them after those days says the lord i will imprint my laws upon their heart and on their mind i will inscribe them producing an inward change. He completely did away with the old and brought you brand new spirit, spirit that is holy, acceptable, and absolutely cleansed by the blood of Jesus and can never be affected by sin ever again because his sacrifice paid for our sins forever. There's no more annual sacrifices year after year. His sacrifice paid one time, boom, sin is completely paid for. We don't need to keep bringing them up before God. We don't need to constantly sit there having a guilty conscience, a sin conscience, and like sin has power anymore. Guys, sin has no more power. It has no power to separate you from the love of God at all. You are completely scary free. And that's why Paul says, don't use your freedom to indulge in the bad things because you are free. You are so free. Anyway, I'm getting on a tear again, aren't I? Well, it's just so good, guys. The Holy Spirit continues to say, and on their minds, I will inscribe them producing inward change. And then he says, oh, and their sins and lawless acts. Hold on. Stop it. So 
their sins and lawless acts. Did you know that he didn't just say for their sins, their sins and lawless acts? That means no more behavioral Christianity. None of this religiosity where you gotta be perfect all the time. You gotta have good works to get to heaven. I did this in your name, I did that in your name. Jesus says, you can do that in my name. People will prophesy, declare, build big churches in my name. But I'll say in the last day, I never knew you. Guys, we gotta know him. And if we know him, we don't have to try to be holy or act holy. We are holy because we know him and we've been made holy. We love as a byproduct of who we are. You don't have to tell an apple tree to produce apples. That tree is literally going to produce apples because that is what it does. We've been born again, made holy, been righteous, been redeemed. And because that is who we are, that is what we do. We love one another. We have grace. We have forgiveness. We love, we give life to people because that is who we are because we are born of God. It says, those who love one another, this is how you know they're my disciples. Because you can't help but to love one another if you're abiding and being with Jesus. So let's go back to this amazing scripture. Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more, no longer holding their sins against them. Now, where there is absolute forgiveness and complete cancellation of the penalty of these things, there is no longer any offering to be made to atone for sin. Wow, it's done, it's over. He paid the price so that you could be free because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And it says without holiness, we cannot enter into the house of God. So let's go into this a little bit more. Believers, since we have confidence and full freedom to enter the holy place, we have confidence and full freedom because he paid for our sins. So we can enter in the presence of God anytime we want, no matter what we've done. Because we're not defined by the things we've done in the flesh, but we're defined by who God has made us, which is a brand new person. The old is past, the new has come. Sin cannot have dominion over you. Sin cannot have dominion over your spirit. You are holy, and what God has made holy is holy forever. You cannot undo this holiness. Your sins, your mess ups, your failures, your faults cannot make you unholy because what God has made holy, no man can make unholy. Jesus came to sacrifice, to pay, to take away the sin that was literally in between you and God. And by doing so, he made you holy so you can always have fellowship with God. Just saying. And by the way, yes, I am passionate about this because this is freedom. This is something to be excited about. I don't find many people that are walking around in guilt and shame having a lot of freedom or being effective for the kingdom of God because they're so focused on themselves. And man, that's a hard place to be because you're struggling all the time. God doesn't want you struggling. God says you're more than a conqueror. You're, you're an absolute ambassador of love. You're going out being witnesses of this good news. It's not good news if you're constantly struggling with sin all the time. That's not good news. That's bad news. That means, oh, I got problems, more problems. No. He set you free so you can tell people about this good news of liberation. So let's continue. We have confidence to enter the presence of God with full freedom, the place where God dwells by means of the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice, by this new and living way which he initiated and opened for us through the veil, as in the Holy of Holies, through his flesh. And since we have a great and wonderful priest who rules over the house of God, let us approach God with a true and sincere heart. In other words, being just real with God. Open your heart, be real with God. Let us approach God with a true and sincere heart in unqualified assurance of faith. So having had our hearts sprinkled clean from evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water, let us let us hold, hold fast and hold tightly to this truth because it gives us hope. Wow, is that not a lot? I know that's a lot, but man, that is so good. Freedom, Jesus set you free so you could be free. Not so we could continually be reminded of our sins. If he died for your sins, then why are we constantly bringing up our sin before God? God's like, it's dealt with. I don't know what you're talking about, but, but I sinned, I, I did this, I watched porn. That's your flesh. That's why I told you, deny your flesh, pick up your cross, follow me. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was absolutely a lot to take in, but it's so worth it for you to get your freedom. I hope you guys were encouraged by this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share this with your friends. If you know they're living in condemnation and have this kind of a mentality. And if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you get notifications every time I post a video. And I will see you, my awesome kingdom influencers, in the next video.